think the thing that we've seen people really need is just more information about the publishing process and also just because scholarly communications is changing. So a lot of academics want to know where is the best place to publish, how do they find what the best place to publish is, what, um, like what metrics should they be using, which things are relevant to them, and then just also things like research data management, writing um, data access statements for the journals that they use as well, that's been coming up a lot more. The publishing environment is growing more and more complicated. Um, there's a lot of policies in place, there's a lot of guidelines that aren't necessarily explained why they're there, they're just researchers are told to follow them. So we try to do some kind of serious sessions that are more uh, about databases and um, how to use them, but we also do quite a lot of fun and interactive sessions, uh, like an open access escape room that we created to create some more fun and engagement around open access. Well I manage the institutional repository so I get quite a lot of questions around open access and quite a lot of questions around whether we can pay for publishing but we don't have an institutional fund so, so I'm sort of fielding some of those queries around how people can use different options for, for publishing um, and as a team we're trying to do more on publishing and I'm being more proactive about where you publish so we're trying to do sessions and there's definitely a demand for it. At the moment we're seeing a lot of questions about open access in particular relating to, to Plan S, the, some of the European funders' uh, plans to really increase the pace and uptake of open access. And some of the researchers are, are worried that they're, going to, they're not going to be able to publish in particular journals and that the whole journal landscape is going to dramatically alter. We're really getting a lot of questions these days on open access and research data management and that's not really surprising considering that people are focusing on REF21 and we've got to keep in line with our um, research strategy at the university. So a lot of questions on open access, so where to publish, how to get funding, how to make it accessible as soon as possible. Different metric approaches such as bibliometrics and alt metrics are quite a lot on the rise, mostly for the research community, both for like mapping out where their fields are going, but also to see where impact might lie to some extent. That said, I think that the uh, measures themselves are a bit problematic. Citation analysis and impact factor, for instance, are measures that are quite easily skewed by outliers, for instance. Increasingly, we're seeing a lot of questions and inquiries come in about research data management. It's something that, when I first started in my job about four years ago, nobody ever asked me about. And so we're getting a lot of questions from staff, especially those applying for proper kind of big funders, like Wellcome Trust, um, UKRI kind of funders. They're being asked to fill in research data management plans, and so we get a lot of questions about those, and that's very specific kinds of researchers who are asking those questions. That led us to develop a research data management policy um, and come up with a kind of a template plan to help them. We get quite a lot of students and academics coming to um, subject librarians to talk about how to find information because um, there's so much information out there that you don't always know what's good information, what's fake news. And I mean, in the world of publishing now, there's so many I mean, fake journals that are putting a bad name to open access journals as well. So it's kind of teaching people about how to find information that's trustworthy. We try to do a lot of joint sessions with our research and innovation support department. So we do things where we talk about publishing. So we do a, we are doing something called Ready, Steady, Publish. So it's talking about how to think about where you want to publish, who is your research audience, and then also things about like how we can help with that, and then when you're finished, where does it go, the repository, how do you make it openly accessible to people. The other side of that is just obviously advocating with as many people as possible, going out to departments, and then obviously when people like yourselves come and do talks, we try to link up so that the library can be there when Taylor and Francis is there and say, Taylor and Francis is here today to show you some things and we're here to support you beyond that point.